Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I'm going to make a quick video on crypto jacking for my cybersecurity video list. Now real quick, what is crypto jacking, why should you care about it, and how can you protect yourself from this? Now, you might be hearing more and more of this, especially of late on a media because they like to use things like this as a frenzy, especially with how Bitcoin is and everything else in the media. But what crypto jacking is, if, I'm assuming that you know what cryptocurrencies is, crypto mining is. And instead of someone using their own equipment to mine for cryptocurrencies, they use your equipment without you knowing most of the time. So as far as things goes, the big thing to note is the individuals that can be affected is individuals like yourself, or it can be something like a company server, government server, stuff of this nature. So as, thing, as, far, as far as that goes, the th big thing that you got to note is there's two different types of infection methods. A lot of people aren't talking about the more dangerous one, mostly because it's not been discovered. It has happened yet. But um, drive-by downloads is basically where if you go to a website and you see an advertisement play, then what happens is you, the website itself doesn't really have control over the advertisement, but you can have malicious code downloaded from that advertisement. And if you got like an out-of-date operating system or some other type of vulnerability into the system, it can exploit that vulnerability and load stuff like Trojans or rootkits or whatever else onto the system itself through that vector. So the big thing to note is um, if the hacker wanted to, they can use that vector to actually load a, um, a malware that mines for cryptocurrencies on your computer. It will probably max out your process of power or get near maxed out. So this is a telltale sign of uh, that that's exactly happening. Way to, f uh, to prevent that from happening is just make sure everything's up to date, your security's all good and whatever, and you're using reputable browsers, so Firefox, Chrome, and so on. So as far as that goes, that's a big thing to note. Now the more common way is you go to a site, um, it might be a, a, you know, a random site, or it might be something that would be trusted. Believe it or not, stuff like government sites has been affected with this. Showtime has been affected with this. A few others have been affected with this. And it's where a hacker will get into the system change the the website itself and for the most part it takes a long time normally for someone to catch it because they don't change anything that's noticeable but the code has been changed and normally the intrusion sets something off but it takes a little bit of time to find what exactly happened so what happens is is basically the uh, website itself it will load uh, a script onto your computer and as long as that site is up on your computer it will be mining for cryptocurrency now one thing to note is on some browsers even if you close the browser um, the press the X button it will still mine for the currency but that's only because instances are still up uh, basically if you go in Windows Task Manager you might see like a dozen instances of Chrome or Firefox or whatever it may be, it, even if the browser is closed itself. Well, basically, I, I don't know which one has that problem, and sometimes that gets fixed, and sometimes that you know sticks around. So that's a big thing to know. So I would just treat them all as a possibility. But basically, what happens is is um, the instance of the mining is still running and that's still in the background along with a bunch of other things so with that the um way to fix this is believe it or not adblock adblock and some other things um there is no coin i'll leave a link down below to that it's a chrome extension and um basically this will stop those scripts from running 
Now, with that uh, sites, they might say, oh, allow us to mine currency with your process empowerment stuff. And you might say, all right, that's fine. But the biggest thing that you need to note is some things that are undesirable might be attached to that. So I wouldn't allow that. And if you say that, well, I shouldn't really worry about that because it doesn't sound like a big deal. Keep in mind that your electric bill will start to spike. Your processor will start kind of to degrade much quicker and you'll have other problems like that. Now, real quick for company side of things. Well, basically Tesla, they had an AWS server that didn't have any password from my understanding and someone loaded malware on there. Big thing to note with servers uh, being government or companies, most of the time the electricity itself is not really monitored. The processing is normally not monitored in many cases. Um, and uh, other than the network, most things are not monitored to a significant degree. And plus on top of that, it has a high speed internet normally and the things always on. So that, the big thing to note is company servers tend to be a bigger target because that's a much bigger resource into itself. So with that in mind, uh, the basic way to fix that is basically have good security. There's not really much to it. Have a password on server, have it where the network's being monitored and all the other stuff that comes with it. It, it is pretty dead simple. You might have some on trying to intrude, but you should be able to catch them in the act. So that's a big thing to note. Now, as far as that goes, hopefully this answers some questions and whatnot. If you still got any questions on this, feel free to leave that down in the comment section, and I'll see you next video. Have a great day.